Hi dear friends, welcome to a new session of Solveworks video tutorial series. This is part number 5, Assembly Platform of Solveworks. As we have discussed in the previous video, in the Assembly Platform of Solveworks, we can join the 3D components by using mates and relations, even by maintaining the degrees of freedom. Once we join the components together, we can take the assembly for the next level for the inspection by using the commands like uh, interference and collision detection. In interference detection, we will check for the interference between the 3D components and then we'll check for the collision detection by making a motion study. Then uh, we can take to the next level here in the screen. You can see that this is a completed assembly including the motion study. And uh, first we have completed all these individual components by using the 3D platform. Then uh, we uh, imported them to the assembly and assembled them together and provide the degrees of freedom and also we calculated the motion study and then the, this is the final result. Now you can see that it is very easy to explain the concept of this mechanism by using the motion study of Solvex software. This is one of the another advantages. After this there is a provision for making bill of material directly and also develop an explored view to get more clarity in the assembly structure. Once we finish everything we can save the assembly as a video file and we can put it in our PPT or some other kind of documents. This is the briefing about uh, the activities in this particular session. Now we'll have a close look on each commands in assembly. Here we go. Click on the new. As usual we have three options. So far we have dealt with the part for 2D and 3D. Now we are in the new platform. Assembly. Click and OK. Now we are into the assembly of SOLIDWORKS. See, in the task pane you can see that there is an option called begin assembly by default and here we can insert a part or assembly. Uh, we will discuss it later. Come to the command manager. There are some new commands. See, some commands are familiar, similarly like our 3D commands and some commands are very new. So these old commands are very much important for making a complete assembly and when we are moving to this area you can see the most three important options once you complete the assembly by using all the features and commands over here you can come to this area completing the assembly go for new motion study there we can provide all degrees of freedom as I mentioned and also you can generate the bill of material directly in a single click and here is the explorer view for getting more idea about the structure of assembly and we will start with the insert component directly and then we will go with the each and every commands so the first command is insert component there is a drop down when you click the drop down you can see that insert component new part new assembly and copy with mates insert component means if you have completed the 3d and saved in a folder you can insert the component directly from that folder by using this option new part is another option here you can see that only the part option is active and all other things are grayed out means you can create a part from the beginning by using this platform from here even in the assembly platform you can draw the part and then you can make the assembly this is the second option we have and of course you can call a assembly directly to the assembly platform say for example you have a multiple components and uh, you have completed one assembly that is called a sub assembly and you can call that sub assembly to this platform for making the full assembly and copy with the mates and very important tool uh, we will discuss this one after completing the mate option because it is relating with the mates there are mainly three different ways to insert a component to the assembly platform first one is a regular one click on the browse option and then open the folder that you saved all the all your files and simply click on the file and open so it will come to the assembly and you can call different components by using the same so simple double click also will work out this is the first step and another way is if you are in the assembly platform say for example I opened the assembly now I'm here just close this one you can drag and drop it open the folder this is a folder I have all different components simply drag it and drop there and you can drag any number of components from the folder so this is a second way and the third way is say for example if you are doing a 3d I'm opening one component now see now I am in 3d 
I ha I just completed this 3D. I want to take it directly to the assembly platform. There is one way. Go to new drop down. In new there is a drop down. Click on assembly from part. So now here you can see that our part is now here in the assembly platform. So these are the three ways. Either you can browse it or drag and drop or you can directly transfer the 3D platform into assembly. The next command is the main command of assembly. This is the most important one among the Solworks assembly commands as we are using this one for positioning two different components relative to one another by maintaining all degrees of freedom. In order to, here you can see that it's gray out, it is not active. In order to activate this one, drag one component to the graphics area. Okay, now it is active. Click on the mate. Here you can see that we have three different set of mate options. The first one is standard mates, then we have advanced mates and mechanical mates. Under mechanical mates, you can see that the direct mating options like a cam, gear, rack and pinion screw is available. So in a single click, it will give the total degrees of freedom for that particular element. We will see one by one. As we discuss, the first category of mate is standard mates. It consists of coincident mate, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, concentric and there is an option for lock and two other options we can give a distance between two surfaces and also a particular angle we will see one by one the first one is coincident mate in order to check various mate options we need to call a part to the graphics area of assembly by using insert component click on insert component browse first I am calling T shape and followed by a cube so now I have a cube and T-shape in the graphics area. In the design tree, you can see that the T-shape and cube is listed. The T-shape is coming with the F in bracket and cube is coming with a minus in bracket. F is representing this particular component is a fixed component and minus cube is coming with the minus which is representing the cube is a floating component. Floating component means which is having a relative motion with the fixed component so here you can see that it cannot move but this can move to any position at the time when we are giving a relation the floating component will move to complete that particular relation so this is actually very much helpful for the bottom up assembly there are two approaches in solver assembly that is bottom up assembly and top down assembly in bottom up assembly is the conventional method where we are actually making all the parts and saved it in a folder then we are calling that to the graphics area of assembly and mating them together by using mate options. That's what we are following. There is another kind of assembly. It is called a top down design. In top down design, we are making the parts in the assembly platform itself. So which is giving more flexibility for making the parts without considering more dimensions. And we can instantaneously make any changes. But the most common and easy method is bottom up assembly method. So we are going with the first option, coincident one. Normally we can make coincident relation between two points, two edges and two faces as well. So here I'm starting with the point, go to mate. I'm clicking coincident option. I'm selecting this corner and this corner. So those two corners are joined together by using coincident option. Here you can also see that the floating component is moving towards to the fixed component for completing the mate. So this is what I mentioned like uh, one part is fixed and the other one is floating for bottom up assembly. Here you can see that it is having a wide degrees of freedom but it is fixed by this particular corner. And another important point is when we are checking on the mate in the design tree it will list all the mate relations of a particular assembly. At any point of time you can come click on this and you can edit or you can delete anything we can do by using that option. Say for example I am deleting the vertex one from here and I am selecting here it will automatically move to that point. Here is the option and similarly once it's completed if you want to delete this one we can delete it also click right button and delete it. Next is the coincident mate between two edges. For that I am clicking on the mate and go to coincident option. I am selecting one edge from the cube and one edge from the T section as well. So here we can see that after completing the mate, 
the two edges are in line in line now if you are moving away from this for more clarity we can take the front view of this one and pressing the space bar go to front view here we can see that this is actually maintaining this relation if I'm trying to move it away from this it will not move because the relation is maintained over here so this is the relation between two edges now the coincident between two faces go to mate and then click on coincident I'm selecting this face and also this face here we can see that after selecting two faces for the coincident relation these two faces are in a common plane now so these are the two faces we have selected and it will always in a common plane in order to get more clarity we can take the side view see it cannot move away from this only movement is this one all other movements are restricted because these two faces should be See here we can see these two faces should be in a single plane. So this is the basic relation by using coincident option of assembly. Now I am going to place the cube in this area with a full constraint. For that I am clicking on the met option, go to coincident. First I am restricting these two faces in a single plane. And then I am selecting one face from the cube and other from here and restricted. Now here we can see that only one motion is remaining that is the up and down motion. All other motions are restricted. The first motion is restricted by these two faces and the second is by these two faces. Now I can restrict the third motion by selecting the down face and the upper face of the T section. So now it is completely restricted. The next to mate under standard category is parallel mate. As the name indicates, it will give a parallel relation between two faces. I'm clicking on the parallel mate now and I'm selecting top face of the cube and this particular face. Here you can see that now it is parallel to each other. The difference between parallel and coincident is in coincident, the faces that we are selecting is coming to the single plane, but in the parallel, it is simply maintaining a parallel relation between those two faces so the next mate option is perpendicular mate and uh, in order to make a perpendicular relation first i'm going to make two faces coincident i'm selecting these two faces now these are coincident now we can see that i'm selecting perpendicular these two faces so it will automatically change it to perpendicular direction so here we can see that in clear go to perpendicular mate see these two faces are perpendicular as I mentioned in the last case when we are selecting one face the system is taken like the face including that plane so here we can see that these two faces including in different two planes those two planes are perpendicular to each other by using perpendicular mate relation okay so the next mate under standard category is tangent mate as the name indicates, we can make a tangent relation between a curved surface with a flat surface or another curved surface i'll show you an example i need to call another part insert i'm calling the q part here now we have two parts together here i'm selecting mate go to tangent selecting this surface along with one face now here you can see that this particular face in the front view it is very clear I'm making these two faces coincident go to coincident selecting these two faces so here it is now see now in the front view we can see that it can move only through the surface so it, it should always maintain a relation even if it is moving this direction we can see that this particular face is always having a tangential relation with the the curve if I'm calling a circle, we'll get more idea. I'm deleting this one. Now for that, first I'm closing the mate and deleting the part. I make a duplicate of this one. In order to make a, du make a duplicate of this one, either you can call it or you can press and hold the control button and then click over the surface. That will make a duplicate of that one. See now, go to mate. First I'm giving an coincident relation to make it in a same line. I'm clicking this one and this one. So it's in same plane now and go with the tangent I'm selecting this phase and this phase here we can see I'm selecting the front view now so here this is the motion it cannot go away from this as we are restricted it by using 
tangent relation so we will see more of this one in the coming sessions and the application also the next command is concentric command this is the most important and most commonly used one as the name indicate we can use the curved surface to take to a common center I'll straight away go for an example now the concentric center is active I'm selecting this circle now and also this one see it will automatically assign to a common center and we can select any of these curves all these curves are concentric I'm selecting the outer curve and the surface it will also work out and I'm selecting the outer surface with this one now by using the next option like coincident or something we can assign it properly according to its correct order and this is a list which is representing the possible combination of different geometries for concentric met option and we will see usage of this particular combinations in the upcoming sessions the next met under standard section is a distance met if you want to maintain a gap between two faces or two planes we can use the distance met here in the coincidence we know that if you are selecting two faces it will automatically come together to a single plane if you want to make a distance and we can use distance met here I am selecting distance met and before that I need to make this cube over the L shape for that I am selecting coincident these two faces first okay now the base and also this face now it is properly aligned here we can see that when I'm moving it is properly going through this area now I want to make a distance of 30 mm between these two faces the default option is coincident and I'm clicking on the distance it is automatically giving a default of 53 I'm making 30 here okay now we can see that there is one more option we can flip the dimension to the reverse direction here so this is flipping the dimension these are the two options so the next command is angle mate commonly it is used for making an angle between two entities here one important point we need to notice that even if you are selecting a face the system commonly taking the plane including that face as I discussed earlier so at the time when we are making different angles this point is very much important because we have four options when two planes are intersecting each other it can make four angles the opposite angles will be same so I'll show you one example here the four options see when I'm, se I'm selecting these two faces and go for coincident option it's already coincident now I am selecting this edge and also this search it will come over here now we can see that this particular assembly is having only this degrees of freedom it is moving like this I want to make an angle between these two faces say for example 30 degree what I'm going to do is first I'm clicking on this one see it's already 30 degree I'm going with the 60 degree now so I'm selecting this face and this face it's 30 degree I'm changing that to 60 degree okay the angle is same this is what I want actually but there are three more possibilities the system may show like this so this is also correct when we are considering these two faces are in a plane the angle this angle is 60 degree means the plane including this face and the plane including this face is making an angle 60 degree another option is this one when I am drawing a line from here including this plane this angle is 60 degree now that represent the third portion and now one more thing this one here if I'm drawing a line here this is the 60 degree angle so in this particular case what we need to do is we need to switch between these three options flip dimension aligned flip dimension and the aligned you can switch through these options to get the suitable one now I am going back to my required position for that first I am removing flip dimension it's anti aligned so this is the one I needed press ok now it is fixed over here so this is the method in order to get more clarity on four different angles I'm going to show you two planes see these are the two planes when you are checking these two planes we can see that the selected two faces are in these two planes there are four angles it can create these two ang uh, planes here this is another third and fourth 
so normally when we are switching between the options it will go through all these four positions which one is the required one you can select that one by using and the aligned and the flip option as I mentioned okay that's all about angle so far we have discussed about different kinds of tools available for the standard mates now we are going to do a complete assembly by using standard mate options in this particular exercise number one we are going to use only one command that is coincident command of standard mates here we can see that there is a number of different components specifically four components a large L shape these three are the replica of the same here is a small L shape and N shape and also a T shape and we are going to join them together to make it as a single cube this is the assembly procedure and the positions okay and here it is now we are straight away go for the assembly of this one by using coincident mate before starting the assembly kindly note one important point that all the SOLIDWORKS assembly files relating to this and all the PDF documents and necessary images are available in the description of this video for your download and practice the folder name is cube you can download it from there so here I'm going to start assembly the first option is insert component It's the default option I can browse the component I'm starting from the base I'm taking the large L shape component so I need one more component to assemble this either you can go to insert and do the same thing or you can press and hold the control button and then drag click and drag you will get a copy of the same here we can see that this particular one it is a fixed component this one is a floating one so we can give the relations here I'm going for mate now selecting this phase and this phase okay now I want to make it like this so by using the mate alignment now the second option is I'm selecting these two faces and the final one this one and this one so now the base is ready now I am going with the middle portion so the base is ok now for the middle portion first I am calling the n-shaped component this one here it is this should go inside here so for that purpose I am selecting this face and uh, this face first go to mate I am selecting these two ok now selecting the base and this face so it is coming in a reverse manner we can change the alignment okay now only one more thing is pending that is we can take it out for the selection this face and this face okay now this one and this one perfect so that part is over in the base also now we need to call the same large L component I'm making a copy of that before that I need to close this one making a copy I need a two copy actually okay first I want to join them together here first I'm selecting this phase and this phase go to mate it will automatically detect the now here and here one more is pending the base of this one and the this face okay so that is also done now with the, this face here we'll go with the, this face this face and uh, here now this one with this face okay now we can move these two together ok perfect so the second layer is also done now we have one more I am selecting this part ok and I am also calling the last part the small L shape the corner ok first I am giving the relation between these two this face and this face ok and now can take it out so the bottom face and this one 
okay now this face and this face okay, it's perfect now only one more portion this is the portion we need to this one and uh, this face okay and uh, this base this one okay and finally okay, finish so this is our assembly we completed the assembly properly now now we'll go for the rendering of this one go to render tools then go to final render the rendering option will take some time depends on the RAM and the graphics support in our system here we go now it's going so it's completed more than half now okay okay this is our final result and we can save this in JPEG file now we are going to discuss the second example of standard mids this is a wheel support assembly the documents and the assembly files of this is also available here in the description you can download it for your practice the name is wheel support assembly I'm directly starting with the assembly a new file now go to browse option first I am taking the base here is our base now I can call the another component I'm going to browse now I'm starting with the support first we will assemble these two together the base of this one and this one should be in same platform I'm pressing the control and select these two faces then click on the mate it will automatically detect the coincident mate now I am selecting these two is also coincident now I want to make these two circles concentric so I am selecting one circle from here and you can select other circle from here now this part is over it cannot move anymore now I want to make a mirror image of this one either we can make a copy of this one as we discussed in the last case we can make a copy like this okay one second okay now I have one copy I can use the same procedure to do that say there is another option that is the mirroring option as we discussed in the path go to reference geometry take a plane I'm creating a plane in the middle selecting this edge and this edge it will create a plane in between now go to mirror component the option is available here these all are the feature options I'm clicking on the mirror the plane is already selected now go with the component see in a single click it will come in the other side with the all dimensional features and the mates okay and now I'm calling the third part you can call more than one part so I'm calling one two and three together I'm keeping it over here one two three I'm starting with the, the center part this is called the wheel I'm selecting these two concentric it will automatically select the concentric option I, I want to make it in the middle so I'm selecting this face with the inside face it is perfectly fit inside now here we can see okay now I'm selecting this face with the, the concentric one okay I want to make it in the other direction see I'm making this face also here now it's fixed and I want to make the bush in two sides here we go and before that we can take the cross section it will give more clarity see here is the cross section of this one okay now I want to make the bush over here and here first I'm selecting the bush and also this curved surface here we go okay now the bush should be fit inside I'm selecting this face and this face okay 
it's perfectly fit over the surface i want to make it in the other side also for that i can go with the same mirror option i'm going to select the mirror component i already have the plane so here is my plane i want to select the component this is the component this is the bush i'm selecting from tree click it will come in the other side so it's perfectly fit now now we'll go with uh, removing the section so it's all done now we can call the new part i'm calling the nut now okay so it will be like concentric relation coming in wrong way and we can rotate the alignment here aligned okay now i'm joining this face with this one so it's fitted over there now we have the last component i'm selecting go to browse the bolt the bolt should be here in four holes perfectly what we need to do is i'm selecting these two faces and go to meet concentric automatically now the base and this face it will come and fit over the surface see it is rotating over here if you want to arrest the rotation we can go for a parallel option i'm selecting this face and this face here we can see that these two faces are parallel now so it cannot rotate that is not needed actually and uh, i'm removing the parallel option because in normally in the assembly there is a flexibility for this one to rotate now we need to do the same thing over all these faces or we can go with the our linear component option so in order to check the linear component option we need the distance between these two holes in direction 1 and direction 2 for that go to evaluate here we have a measuring tape we can take the measuring tape and check the distance so distance between these two is 20 okay distance between these two is 65 so and now we will go for assembly and linear component go to linear component pattern we clearly discussed the usage of uh, linear pattern in our video series part number 4.1 if you want to quickly review that one you can go there and review it directly by using the selection option i'll quickly show you go to the video series 4.1 part it will start the video directly and you can go to the show more option here it is if you want to check the linear pattern you can click on the timeline that will take you to the same place here we go so now it is explaining the linear pattern you can review the linear go back to our session now as i discuss the distance between these two is 65 and here it is 20 what i am going to do is here i'm selecting the first part the part this component and the direction this direction okay so the value is automatically 20 i have given this one and the number is 2 okay and here another direction this is my another direction so it is at a distance of 65 it's already 65 there and but it is in reverse direction i can change the direction by click over here so it's all done now this is our final part now we can go for the rendering go to render tools go for final render it's rendering now here is the option okay here we go this is the rendered portion of our work and we can save this as a jpeg file the next category of mat is advanced mats as the name indicate it is providing a combined effect of more than one standard mat in the advanced mat we have the profile center symmetry width path mat and linear coupler here also we have the distance and angle we have seen the same thing in standard mat also here it is different it is giving the distance limit and the angle limit we can give the minimum and maximum value of distance and angle 
so that the assembly will move in between these two extremes so this is a very powerful tool and we will see the application of that one in detail in the coming session we will start with the profile center the first mate in this section is profile center mate which automatically center aligns geometric profile to each other and fully defines the components we will see one simple example i'm browsing one component i'm browsing the cylinder first here is my cylinder now i am calling my second part here is the cone i want to join this cone and the cylinder together by using the profiles these two are circular profile what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the advanced mate profile center i'm selecting the circular profile here and also here so here we can see that two the profi two profiles are joined together with the center but in reverse direction we can change the alignment by clicking on the align option now it's perfect okay so it's aligned automatically without giving any other dimension now i can call my third component which one is the cube in the in this particular part we have a square shape over here and circular profile here also go to meet go to advanced mate profile center i'm selecting the square profile here and also the circle here it is automatically attached now here we go now the last part is a hexagon a hexagonal shape i'm selecting this profile and go with the mate go to the advanced mate and now join with this one so now it is having the rotation over there we can arrest the log the rotation also i want to make this one in the middle so here is the option for giving the dimension i'm giving the dimension it is moving and straight away i'm giving 50 so still there is distance to move and we can fix the distance and place it in the middle it's almost in the middle now and i am fixing that one here so this is the profile mate here we can see that by using a single command we can assign all of them together in a single click this is the command we will see more application of this particular command in the coming exercise session the session number 5.2 the next command in this section is symmetric mate which actually makes two similar entities to be symmetric about a plane or a planar surface we will see one example i have one box over here with the doors i'm calling the box into the graphics area and fix it this is the fixed component and uh, i'm calling the next one that the door so i have the door over here now i'm joining the door to the box by using our regular coincident option i'm selecting these two part by using control now coincident okay now it it can move like this and i am selecting the top face and this one okay now the movement is like this okay outer part now i want to make a copy of this one select and i'm making a copy here now i'm doing the same thing in the other side i'm selecting this part and this part go for mate okay now the top face and this one so here we have two parts which is work working exactly similar but independently we can give a symmetric motion to these two parts by using symmetric option i'll show you go to advanced mate take symmetric and first we need to give a symmetric plane i already have created one plane along with the box see here is the plane in the middle or if there is no plane we can use which option go to reference geometry take the plane select this phase and this phase that will create a new plane okay i'm using that plane now okay i have one plane i'm going for mate again i'm using the symmetric so plane is already there now i want to select two symmetric entities i'm selecting one here and one here also now these two doors are symmetric here we can move like this okay it is having a synchronized symmetric 
motion so this is the second mate uh, that is symmetric the third mate in this session is a width mate which is used for constraining a tab between two planar surface it is very important and a very useful tool we'll go for one example and we have two set of examples with a real example and a generic one I'm taking the U section here okay now insert the second one a width block okay first I want to make this particular width block here exactly in the middle first I am making some relations I'm making two these two faces coincident now I'm going with the, the width option go to width I'm selecting these two faces and tab section is these two it will automatically adjust to fit in between and now I'm going with the other two faces again go to width mate I'm selecting the width section these two are the width section and I'm selecting these and these are the tab section here we go so it will come and fix exactly in the middle and another example is closing this one now going for a new example here we go I'm selecting a large plate okay and also the width block here it is now I want to make the width block exactly middle in the surface and without knowing any measurement first I am making a coincident relation so it's in the same plane now the same option we can go to width mate I'm selecting these two faces first and then these two then it will adjust automatically now I can go with the other two faces go to width I'm selecting these two faces and these two see it came to the exact middle and we can take the top view of this one here it is so it is exactly in the middle now so we'll go for uh, one real example I'm deleting these two components no okay we can call one assembly this is a roll assembly I'm calling this roll assembly first I want to join the roller in the area provider so here is my roller first I am making a concentric relation between these two I'm going with these two when I'm clicking the mate it will automatically select the concentric okay now I am moving here here we can see that it is not exactly fit over the surface otherwise we can go for the coincident option if I am making a coincident option I'm selecting this phase and uh, this phase and go for coincident see the assembly is wrong here we can see that so in this side it is not properly fitted because the total length of the cylinder and the distance between these two is not same for that purpose we can use the width mate I'll show you first I am removing the coincident option from here we wrongly gave the coincident option so it is having this motion I'm taking it out go to mate go to advanced mate width select the width section I am considering this phase and uh, this phase as my width section and also the tab section is this phase and uh, this one we can see that it will come to the phase automatically and fit there very properly so this is the advantage of width mate next to mate in this section is path mate path mate actually constrains a selected point of a component to a specific path we can define the path by selecting one or more entities in the assembly I'll show you one example I'm calling a path here this is my path 
I'm using the sketch entities for creating the path. Now I am calling my second component. So here I have another entity with a point. So I'm making a point in the middle of the sphere. Here I'm going to connect this point with uh, my path. So once I connect these two by using the pathmate relation, this point will be constrained in the path only so that we can get the smooth motion. I'll show you. Go to the mate. I'm selecting the advanced mate. Go to pathmate. First, component vertex. It is asking for a vertex or point. I'm selecting this is the point I need to connect. Path selection. Here we can see that if I'm clicking over here, I can select only one uh, entity in the sketch but I need to select it fully so here we have the selection manager go to selection manager and we can select all the sketches continuously here it is now go to here now now we can see that when I am moving this one it will go all the way through the so it will make this relation so that I can constrain it in the path itself Okay, this is the path mate. I am making it transparent so that we can see the path. So it is following the path perfectly all the time. Okay, we will see more of this one in the coming exercises. Next one is a coupler mate, linear coupler mate, which establishes a relationship between the translation motion of one component with the other, and we can specify a ratio of movement and also make a reverse motion. I'll show you one example go to I'm taking one base here and uh, I'm calling one slider also so this can be slide over the surface first I'm joining them together by using the coincident relation the regular one and I'm joining these two faces as well here we go see this can slide over the surface I'm making one more also see here is my duplicate and I'm joining those two also here okay this phase with the base okay now see here we have two separate sliders and we are going to make a couple relation between these two go to advanced mates go to linear coupler it is asking for the selection of faces and uh, we should select vertical faces now going with the see here we can see that the linear coupler the ratio is one is to one at the time we are making a translational motion it is actually making a one is to one ratio movement with the one other I'll show you first see if I am moving this one the other one is also moving in the same ratio like the same speed now I'm changing the ratio here I'm making 1 is to 3 here you can see the difference now see when I'm moving the first one the other one will move three times faster than the first one so that is the difference and now if you want to reduce the speed I'm making another value 1 is to say for example 3 is to 1 so the movement will be reduced to 1 by 3 times I'm making it like this if I'm moving this one that will move only 1 by 3 okay and also there is one more one more option that's a reverse I'm making it 1 is to 1 now and reverse see if I'm moving this one to one direction the other will go to reverse direction so this is the usage of coupler the last set of mates in this category is limit mates for the distance and angle which allows a component to move within a range of values for the distance and angle and we can provide the minimum and maximum value the assembly will move in between these two ranges we will see first the distance limit for that I am going with a general example first by using the cylinder and piston then we will see a realistic case by using the syringe and here I have the cylinder I'm calling the piston also now I can join them together by using the concentric relation 
and also it is having this rotation in order to prevent this rotation I can make these two faces parallel ok now and here we can see that it can move all the way through the surface of the cylinder in order to resist that we need to give a movement restriction from this phase till this phase for that purpose first I am going to check the length of this part go to evaluate and take the measuring tape and we can check the length so the length from the start to end is 100 mm so the limit is minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 100 and we are going to give the limit now distance limit go to mate go to advanced mate and go for the distance limit it is asking for the minimum value and the maximum value and before that we need to select the faces to be mated and these are the two faces I am giving the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 100 when we are giving the maximum value before check we can check it here because sometimes it may be aligned in a wrong direction so here it's perfect we have the two values and I am checking it now here we can see that now it is moving in the realistic manner and we restricted the motion with a minimum and maximum limit now we can go for a real example of syringe the same principle and uh, I'm calling the syringe cover first so here it is now I'm inserting the piston syringe piston now I'm joining them together by using concentric relation here it is it is coming in the wrong direction we can change the alignment by clicking aligned option so here also we have the same problem See when we check this one it is going and pass by the uh, surface and we can restrict this one and for more clarity I am taking the cross-sectional view of the syringe I'm going like this so it will give the cross-sectional view I can easily select the faces needed okay here I need to check the length of the part go to evaluate and take the measuring tape and check the length of this part it is 75.89 so and also here is a small thickness we have in order to check that thickness I'm selecting from here to here the thickness is 1.8 when we minimizing the 1.8 from the length it is 74.09 so it should start from 0 to 74.09 so for that I'm selecting mate go to the advanced mate option here see I'm selecting this is my first phase and this is the other one first time giving zero value okay and check the zero value whether it is taken correctly or not okay zero is correct now and I'm giving 74.09 and we can check the 74.09 here okay it's also correct the reason why we are checking the 74.09 by inputting here is sometimes the flip dimension is on the 74.09 is calculated like this that's the reason why we are checking over here for the dimensions now it is perfect and we can and now I am removing the cross section so now the motion of the piston and cylinder is perfect and realistic now I am changing the appearance of syringe cover to glass so that we can see the rendering of glass so far we didn't discuss about the rendering of glass the glass rendering will give a very realistic effect that we can see over here and I am changing the piston color to white piston to white now ok now I am making it more visible now we can go for the render option go to render final render the rendering of glass in SOLIDWORKS is very much realistic you can see over here now it's rendering so here is the result
so it's done so this is the final result so it is looking uh, very much realistic now we'll go with the next option angle limit the next one is angle made the principle is same we can give the minimum angle and the maximum angle the assembly will work in between these two angles we'll go for one simple example first I'm taking a box and also a cube and we have another cube here first I am joining them together by edges see here okay now I can join these two faces okay here we go and it's joined now see when I'm checking the movement we can see that the real movement is from from here till this point but we can see that it can move all the way inside the surface also in order to restrict and make it more realistic what we will do is we will go for mate option go to the advanced mate and here we have the option angle and first I'm selecting these two faces and before that we can see that if I'm selecting these two faces so the minimum value should be zero this is zero and the maximum it should come over here means the angle between these two is these two faces 180 degree so first uh, again go to advanced mate and I'm selecting these two faces go to angle first I'm giving angle 0 here is 0 we'll check 0 angle 0 angle is perfect and we are giving 180 see 180 is this okay now I'm closing them together see now it is working very perfectly the angular movement is perfect okay now we'll see another example that we have discussed in the symmetry the door option deleting this one I'm calling the okay box and also the door insert the door also now I am fitting the door these two edges go for coincident and then I'm selecting this face and the inside face okay and uh, the movement if I am selecting these two faces the movement should be from the top it is very clear the closing it is 0 degree and the total opening is 90 so it should be from 0 to 90 I'm selecting mate option go to advanced angle mate these two are the faces now I'm giving 0 value here and 90 here checking the 90 now ok perfect ok we'll see now we can check this will go to this way so that's the principle of using angle limit so that's all about the advanced mate options now we will see mechanical mates the last category of mate is mechanical mate it is more specific to mechanical assemblies we will see one by one it includes cam slot hinge gear rack and pinion screw and universal joint straight away we'll go with the cam the first one is cam mate a cam follower mate is a type of tangent or coincident mate it actually allows to mate a cylinder or a plane or a point to a series of tangentially extruded faces such as our cam so it will give a realistic relation between a cam and follower we'll straight away go for one example first I am browsing the center of the cam and it's already fixed now I am calling the cam itself so here is my cam now I can make concentric relation between these two and now I am making coincident between these two as well so it's properly fixed over here now I am calling the sender of the follower here is the sender of the follower and also the follower I am making the relation the same relation again between these two concentric and between these two 
coincident. So here when I try to rotate the part it will not rotate as these two parts are floating now. So I need to fix any of this part to make a relative motion between these two. And before that I am going to make these two things in the same plane. I am selecting this face and uh, this face. So it will come in the same plane now. Now I, I want to fix this part and I am fixing. So now it is having a relative motion. Okay, before fixing the thing, I'll make a relation between these two. Now it can rotate. And I'm moving it here. So this will come and touch over the surface. So I'm keeping it like that, go for fixing. So it can touch over the surface, but it's a little different. Okay. So I'm again float. I'll make it like this so it is seems to be perfect now so I'm fixing over here fix it now I'm going for the mate option go to mechanical mate cam it is asking for the cam path and also the cam follower the cam path is all the surfaces are the cam path so it is automatically selected the total faces and here the cam follower this is the follower face so it will automatically touch over the surface and now here is the result here we go see it will move like this so it is actually give a realistic motion between cam and the follow so if you want to make it more precise I can mm, change the position okay now it is perfect and see here we go so this is the cam option. The second type in the mechanical category is slot mate. By using this we can assemble a component to a straight or curved slot which can be fitted as a free or to the center of the slot or at a distance from the slot or at a percentage along the slot. We will see one example with uh, all these options. First I am selecting a part with a straight and curved slot here it is now I'm calling a bolt first I'm going to make a, a relation between these two so these two faces should be coincident and now I'm going to select the slot option curved area here also here we can see that now the part is ready here it can move only through this region see is a part of this slot. Now I'm going to have different options. Here we can see in the constraint it's free it can be anywhere in this slot. If I'm making center in the slot it will go to the middle and I can give the distance from one end or to the other end. Say for example I'm giving 30 from one end now or I can give 2 from the other end and we can also give the percentage so for example I am giving 75 percentage from this direction or from the other direction and once I fix it will be like this this is the slot option now I am going with the, the curve the same thing I want to make a coincident relation between these two faces to make the head portion outside and now I can go with the slot option I am selecting inside surface and the curved surface here is now it is in the slot it can go through the slot only and now we are giving different options the same thing center it will come to the center now and distance we can give the surface distance say for example I'm giving 120 it will go to a distance or to the percentage okay 20 percentage it will come to 20 percentage and I'm fixing our here and in the coming exercise we will see more example of this one in detail third one in the mechanical mate section is hinge mate a hinge mate limits the movement between two components to one rotational degrees of freedom it has the same effect of adding the concentric mate plus the coincident mate the same effect but we can give in a single go it will give the realistic effect of tilting a hinge and we can also set the angle limit directly over there we'll go for one example here I have the part I'm making the duplicate of this one 
for adding in the other side for that purpose i can press and hold the control button and drag the part so we will get a duplicate now i want to rotate the floating part because it this area should be joined over here and then go for otherwise we can directly go for hinge option it is asking for concentric sections i am selecting these two are the concentric sections and which are the coincident sections i'm selecting this is one part to coincide coincide and this is the other part it will come like this but we know that our direction is not like this i'm changing this one now our direction is perfect here we go and uh, here is the hinge now here it is but we can see that there is no limit of angle and we can limit the angle by uh, there are two options either we can go to hinge and uh, there is an option for specifying the angle limit it is working as the same principle as that of the advanced mate or we can directly go to advanced mate i'm preferring to go to advanced mate advanced mate and uh, limit first time selecting the faces so these are my two faces i'm giving zero value here we can check the zero effect of zero okay perfect now the maximum is 180 i'm limiting to 180 actually it can go till this point but i'm limiting to 180 let me check the 180s see and we'll check whether it is moving in the same way or not see here so and now we can complete the assembly by adding the screw here is the part i'm selecting the part and giving the concentric relation here and one last option select the face and go for this face okay finished now we can check this one okay so this is a part we can see that which can open or we can give the angle uh, here i limited from 0 to 180 in actual case it can go beyond 180 and we can give the value any point of time we can go to limit angle here it is go to edit if i am giving say for example 270 that will go to that much angle so here we go can go to 270 now see this is the limit okay this is the hinge option in mechanical mate next mate in this section is gear mate which force two components to rotate related to one another about selected axis within a given gear ratio the actual simulation of the gear can be provided with the gear ratio by using this option we'll directly have a look on one example first i am going to use two pulleys to explain the principle of gear ratio I'm selecting all the components together now. Okay. Have a center for the small and two pulleys also. So first time concentric relation here. Not in this way, in the other way. Okay. Now I can join these two faces by using coincident. Perfect. Now I want to make these two faces other way join them together also and now I'm making this floating so that I can move it to a specific distance now I'm fixing the center of this one and I'm bringing them in a same plane using mate here it is now here we go so here is my figure now I'm going to give the gear ratio by using gear mate go to mate go to mechanical mate and take the gear it is asking for two curves I'm selecting the first circle and also the second outer circle so it will automatically provide a ratio here here you can see that now I'm clicking OK here you can see when I am rotating one the other will rotate with a gear ratio provided by the red diameter if you want to change the gear ratio here is the option if i'm giving one here one is to five say for example okay now 
here you can see that five rotation of this one will make one rotation of the other and we can go also with the uh, uh, other options make it reverse the rotation will be reversed see this is the principle now um, we can make other changes also we'll go with a, a real example of gear now so this is the final result now we'll see the real mating option of gears by using gear mate option I'm selecting one large gear and also a shaft first time make a constant relation between these two okay now I want to make it in the middle so I'm go going to use our advanced width option I, I will select in these two and these two faces this will come automatically in the middle. okay now I want to make one more component like same so that we can explain the gear mating I make this fix and make the gear floating the same option here also okay now going with the advanced mate width so these two faces and the tabs reference is this one now I am making these two in same plane coincident okay now I can take the frame view and uh, making it properly assemble float specific and fix this part so I can move it to a specific distance and then we need to fix it properly in the section number 5.3 we will explain about the motion study where we will see different options how to make assemblies with the motion here it's for a demonstration only okay this is looking fine now I'm fixing this component so this also fixed this is fine we'll go for the gear main now first I'm going to take mechanical mates go to gear I'm selecting two circles it will automatically select the here the ratio is 1 is to 1 okay perfect now I am rotating so it is rotating perfectly with a gear alignment as I mentioned we will discuss about the motion study and contact set in detail in the coming sessions here I'm going to add one motor to show the simulation there is an option for adding the motor and we can also change the RPM this is coming under motion study okay now you can simulate it so this is the final result and we will explain more about the simulation of different assembly by using motion study in the coming sessions the next mate in this section is rack and pinion mate as the name indicate rack and pinion converts the linear motion of rack into circular motion of the pinion this is a basic mechanical assembly we have a direct tool for simulating the motion of pinion and rack together we'll see one example now the part file for the rack and pinion can be directly taken from design library toolbox here is the toolbox we have go to ANSI metric power transmission gears we have different kinds of gear we can simply drag the gear over here to the graphics area it will ask for different values simply we can change the values over here that will automatically reflect it now okay click escape I'm taking the spur gear also if you want to make the spur gear you can refer 4.3 of uh, Solveworks video tutorial series so in 4.3 we explained about the advanced 3d modeling exercises where you can directly go to the description here it is spur gear so it is explaining about the spur gear here and uh, so this is the option you can see this video to complete the spur gear and using the same method for the rack also only thing is we use we need to use the same method but in a longitudinal direction to complete it so this is the method 
for drawing the gear um, we are back to the assembly now I want to insert one shaft also I'm calling one shaft here so next I'm joining these two parts by using concentric option okay I can set it in the middle by width option I'm selecting these two part and these two also this is the tab okay now I can use these two faces coincident option not in this way but in the other way okay perfect now now I am using the front face okay okay now this is floating we can make a move from the front view remove it together okay now see now we need to give a distance relation between these two for that purpose in order to maintain this distance I already have made a dot in the middle of the shaft so I'm going to use mate then from here to here go for distance this distance will be automatically set so this will not go anywhere it will be moving over the surface only okay now now go to mechanical mate rack and pinion it is asking for the rack you can select any of the longitudinal line in the rack I'm selecting this one and it is now it is asking the pinion here we need to select the circle and I'm going to spur gear here in the tooth cut we can see that the pitch circle so I'm making it visible now for selection so we need to select the pitch circle I'm selecting the pitch circle from here now it's looking perfect once you done you can remove that one also tooth cut go to I'm hiding now it's okay okay now I'm fixing the center shaft so that I can rotate the gear and I'm making this one float okay and I'm rotating here you can see now it is working perfectly like a, a rack and pinion arrangement of mechanical assembly so this is the principle the only difference is at the time of selection we need to select one longitudinal side or lengthy side of the rack and the pitch circle of the gear so this is the relation of rack and pinion mate next mate in the mechanical section is screw mate which constrains two components to be concentric and also adds a pitch relationship between rotation of one component and the translation motion of the other nut and bolt assembly is the best example of this mate and I'm going to show one example of nut and bolt assembly now can browse the component here I have a bolt and nut in order to prepare the part of bolt and nut we already explained in our previous part that is 4.3 of this video tutorial series you can click on the 4.3 go to the description area show more the exercise number 3 explains about the preparation of nut and bolt you can click on the timeline that will directly take you to the position this is the explanation of how to create nut and bolt with the, all the dimensions I'm using the same figure here for the assembly as well so this was our final result we prepared like this okay first I'm calling the bolt then I'm calling the nut also here I'm giving a concentric relation between these two surfaces okay now now I need to constrain some degrees of freedom first of all here we can see that it can go all the way inside it should not be like that because it will go till the point where the thread is available so the total thread length here is 25 I'm using our distance limit option in the advanced mate 
I'm selecting these two faces. So it should start from here 0 to 25 the total thread length. I'm giving 0 okay now 25 and we need to check 25 whether it is taking in the same direction or not. No the 25 is taking in the reverse direction so we need to click on flip dimension. It's perfect now. So one last degrees of freedom here you can see that now it is going only to the thread area but still it is moving straight away so in order to avoid that in order to give the screw principle the rotation of the nut will proceed through the bolt for that I am taking mate option go to mechanical mate click screw so this surface and the thread inside now I am going with the one revolutions per millimeter okay perfect now what we need to do is try to move it along it will not go but at the time of rotation it will proceed through the surface here we can see see when I am rotating this one it is moving through the thread so the rotation is giving that motion so this is the assembly between nut and bolt it will stuck over here because we uh, restricted the total distance to 0 to 25 so that's the screw made in this all works the last one in the mechanical mate section is universal joint. This is the same principle of mechanical universal joint. The rotation of one component about its axis, which is called the output shaft, is driven by the rotation of the input shaft. So we will directly go for one example of the universal joint. Here I can browse the components for universal joint assembly. These are the components and I am calling the bracket this is yoke male and yoke female. I'm calling those parts to the graphics area. Okay. And the next one is I'm making a concentric relation between these two. And also coincident between the top face and the bottom face of the bracket. Okay. Now, now it can rotate. So in order to make a universal joint mate, we need to give a reference point. The reference point should be exactly in the middle of the circle, but exactly in the center as well. So ex exactly here. So in order to make that point, I'm checking for a plane over there. So go to our bracket, the part one, all the planes. So there is no planes in the middle. So we need to create a plane in the middle. And before that, I'm taking the distance from the center of the circle to the surface, the, bo the bottom surface. Go to evaluate and measure from the circle to the surface. It is 845.19 millimeters and I'm minimizing this one and I'm calling our bracket to the screen so that I can make the point in the middle so that will automatically update it in the assembly as well first time check this plane and this one also okay now I'm selecting the plane go for sketch okay now I'm making a point here so the distance from so it is in MMGS distance from this much is 845.19 perfect but we need to make sure that this point is exactly aligned with the center so in order to do that what we can do is I will open the temporary axis here is our temporary axis so I can go for relations now I'm selecting this one and also the temporary axis so we will get coincident so now it is exactly in the middle perfect I can exit the sketch and I'm saving this one close it will ask for the saving yes and also here is the option automatically it will update it there in the assembly yes here we go we can see that now in our assembly in the middle there is a point okay now I'm assigning the other part that is yoke female selecting this phase and this phase go to coincident not in this way but 
the other way okay and I can move it along here now it is here okay now we need to align the yolk female for that purpose here we can see that it is not properly aligned to the center of the portion so I'm opening the temporary axis now I can join the temporary axis I'm selecting this temporary axis and also press control and select the point go for mid it will give a coincident mid okay and I'm hiding the temporary axis again so here we go see now it is having a perfect position and it can rotate itself and this also now I am making them in a correct position okay this also okay now now we can go for the universal I'm going to mate go to mechanical mate all the way down we have the universal join mate it is asking for two faces I'm selecting these two faces now okay and define a join point so we already have created the join point this is our join point okay done now we can see that when I am rotating one part the other will rotate in the similar principle of that of the universal joint okay this is it and this is the complete assembly of universal joint we will see the step by step procedure for assembling all other components in the next section that is 5.2 assembly exercises and here we can have the rotation by using the handle and that will simulate the motion so here it is now we are here in the evaluation part of assembly so far we have discussed about different kinds of mates used in the assembly like standard mates mechanical mates and advanced mates as well and mates are the core component in Solworks assembly as we are using the mates for giving all the degrees of freedom and joining the components together now this is the evaluation we have two different tools for evaluating an assembly the first one is interference detection and the second one is collision detection interference detection is checking the interference between the parts that we already have assembled if there is any part which is joining inside or going inside to the other part that can be easily identified by using interference detection it is available in the tab evaluate here it is interference okay and second one is collision detection as I mentioned interference detection is checking the existing position of the assembly only but in collision detection we can give the motion study the complete degrees of freedom of the assembly and we can check whether there is any collision between the components assembled at the motion if it is there any detection or any collision that will be automatically identified with a color and also a sound so we will see examples for all these and we are starting with the interference detection here is the first example for checking the interference detection this is an assembly including three different components a cylinder a cube and a cone and once we completed the assembly as I mentioned we can check whether there is any interference between the parts go to evaluate and click on interference detection here is the option either we can go with the full assembly that that is the default option or you can check the required parts to be evaluated or calculated for interference detection first I am removing the assembly and I am selecting the first two parts I am selecting part number corn and the cylinder go for calculate it will come with a sound and it is showing that there is an interference so here it is showing so this is the way we can identify the interference and now I am removing these two okay and I'm going with the whole assembly I'm selecting the full assembly and go for calculate here it is showing there are, there are two interference interference 1 and interference 2 so we can go and fix this one so here it is showing that some part is going inside here in the interference 2 also the same issue first we will fix this one I'm giving a so it is moving here first I'm going to give a relation between these two by using the mate go to mate okay 
perfect now this area it is going inside with a distance I'm deleting the distance made from here and now I can move this one and also give a mid option coincident now it's in the center okay or we can do another thing we can go and select these two parts and go for the advanced mid profile center so it will automatically align to the center okay I want to remove the coincident mid otherwise it is like over defining the things okay, now it's perfect okay and I can delete this coincident and uh, now I will select these two faces and go for advanced mate the first option profile center okay. now it is looking perfect so we will check again for the interference go to evaluate interference detection full assembly calculate so it is showing no interferences so this is the way of checking interference detection we'll go for another example now so this is a knuckle joint assembly and the assembly is looking perfect here but we need to check whether there is any kind of interference go to evaluate and go for interference detection we can check the assembly as a whole I'm calculating so it is showing two interference again here we can see there is an interference and here also if you want to see this one the part top level and the collar these two parts actually making an interference so we will check first this one uh, here there is no relation it is going inside now we can make it concentric I'm making these two part concentric now okay so we'll check again whether the same problem is existing or not and uh, interference calculate no only now it is fixed only this side it is having problem again we can go for checking yes and I need to fix it by using the mate relation okay I took the wrong phase clear selection this phase and this one okay and I hope everything fixed now we will check again if there is any interference further no interference so our assembly is safe for further applications the next tool in the assembly evaluation is collision detection which identifies the parts in the assembly which is going to collide each other while we rotate or make running the mechanism and um, we will see one example a very basic example here I have three different components a base plate a rotor and shaft I'm going to assemble them together okay here I can join the components by using smart mate option in smart mate we can select any edge then press and hold the old button and move the component and join with the part so the advantage of smart mate is it will automatically identify two possible relations here we can see that concentric and coincident relation are established by a single click so here also we can do the same thing I'm taking the edge press and hold the old button and move and join with the place needed here here also we can see two mates are assigned in a single step so that is called the smart mate now in this figure it is very clear that at the time when we are moving and rotating the rotor it will come and hit to the shaft so this is simply for the demonstration but in actual real cases of assembly we know that there is a multiple number of components we assemble them together and there should have a mechanism at the time when we are running the mechanism some parts they collide each other we cannot identify which part is going to collide so at that time it is very useful we can make necessary changes to avoid the collision before actual manufacturing so here I'm going to set the collision uh, detection go to move component and in the option we can select a collision detection there are two options we can either check all components or we can go with the specific components here we can go for the specific components we know that the bases have no relation 
at the time of movement the chance of collision is only between these two parts so i am selecting these components first one this one and second this here the options are stop at collision and i need to highlight the portion where it is collide and also sound resume drag i am making a movement when it is touches the surface that will make a sound and highlight the area of collision and also we cannot move further because we already have checked in the option of stop at collision so this is the method of checking and we'll go with the other option also all component means no need to select anything it will check for the collision between all the components in the assembly here also the same thing is happening see so this is the collision detection in the next part that is part 5.2 of the uh, video tutorial series we will see more example of this one and that's all about collision detection next we are going to discuss about uh, how to generate a bill of material for the assembly in solveworks in order to generate a bill of material is a very simple task oh, the one thing we need to make sure that all the components of the assembly should be saved with the exact name then we can directly generate the bill of material and it is editable also a description column is available where we can give the description additionally we'll go for one example so this is the one we already have explained that is a geneva wheel mechanism and uh, here i'm going to generate the bill of material directly and here is the option for generating bill of material and we can go for part level or I means a top level only or part any option we can select i'm going with the top level only now and here in the document i'm increasing the thickness of outer line now we can click the tick option this will automatically generate the bill of material here is the bill of material i'm keeping it here once we keep it here we can go for the editing option i'm changing the font to times new roman and make it bold if you want to increase the size we can increase it also okay here is okay make it fit to the surface now and i'm also stretching it out Okay. Now here is the option for giving the description if you want to add additional columns the same procedure we can insert the columns and all the procedure similarly like our excel file here I am deleting description delete the column okay this is the one we can create and keep okay, I am going to change the bold option so it is looking nice now. So this is the final result very simple one for creating the bill of material the last command in this section is explorer view uh, and also the animation of that explorer view helps to get a complete structure of the assembly at the time of manufacturing normally the position of each and every part can be easily identified by referring to explorer view there is another option that is explored line sketch which will connect each individual component of the assembly and the path and where to go will be provided by this option animation also can be provided to get more idea about the positions we will see two example one is regular explorer view and the other one is radial explorer view so here we have a plumber block assembly now in order to get the explorer view this is the icon used for that either we can directly click on that or go to the insert there is an option explorer view and uh, when i am clicking explorer view there are two options a regular step and also the radial step radial step is normally used for the circular kind of assembly the materials or the components which is moving in the radial direction we will see the second assembly by using a radial step now we are going with the, the regular step in the assembly when we are clicking on individual components it will give three mutually perpendicular axes x y and z we can click on the axis and press and hold to move to the direction see here it is like that okay this is very simple and uh, we will go one by one i'm making it back now explorer view i'm selecting these two components and i'm making them move one direction okay now I am selecting these two and I am moving to the same direction these two and Y and but in the other direction so here it is I can move this one Z this one in the other direction as well 
okay once we complete the assembly uh, we can give a line sketch to identify the positions very clearly so here is the option explore line sketch select the part which is aligned in a single line so like this see it will give a complete idea where to go so we can assign everything like this so this is the method of assigning or exploding the assembly now once we complete the assembly we can go with the, the collapse option at any point of time say click right button go to collapse that will collapse the assembly together and make it as a single and we can go back at any time and make explorer option so it will retain the motion that we already have provided another option is animation of the explorer view in the motion study we can use the animation as I discussed earlier the motion study is an important part of assembly in the next part that is part 5.2 of the SOLIDWORKS video tutorial series we will discuss about motion study in detail for the time being I'm using the animation wizard for exploded view and the collapse click on the animation wizard we have two option explode and collapse I'm going with the explode option now and we can give the duration 10 and the start time of course 0 so the timeline is updated with the details and we can go for the animation now here we go this is it and uh, we can save this animation as a video file by clicking save animation and we can save it as an AVI file then we can use for further purposes like a presentation or something and that's all about the normal kind of exploded view next one we are going to discuss is the radial type so the next one is a radial step in exploded view I'm going to start one assembly here it is now I'm calling the second component okay first we can assemble them together Okay, and then make a movement over here and I can fix the movement okay I can fix this distance by using the distance option I'm selecting this phase and this phase go for distance and make it out here so it is here now and then now I'm making a copy of this one around the surface by using the circular component option here we go and the component to pattern is this one and I need total six numbers okay, perfect see so this is an assembly and we will see more example of this kind of assembly later in the coming session that is part 5.2 and here I'm going for exploded view as I discussed the second step is a radial step go to radial step I'm selecting three parts one two and three and we can move in a radial direction here we can see it is moving in a radial direction and I'm selecting the other three parts also here also we can move in a radial direction so this is the difference in the other case we have three mutually perpendicular planes and um, we can move only the linear uh, direction in X Y and Z here it will make a uh, radial movement and we can combine the linear and the radial motion together in a single assembly for more clarity and we can uh, animate it also the same procedure go to animation wizard go for explode I'm giving 10 seconds over here okay and uh, here we go so this is it it will show us the procedure of okay so that's all about this session 5.1 of SOLIDWORKS video tutorial series the next session is 5.2 assembly exercises with the motion study much more interesting session as we have some mechanisms with the movement and thank you so much for your patient listening i hope you enjoy the session and we will see you in the next session bye bye